Welcome scholars, uh, my name is Mrs. Green and normally I am a fifth grade teacher at Rocks Hill Elementary School. But today I'm super excited because I get to be all the wonderful fourth and fifth grade students in all of Seattle. I get to be all your teachers today. Um, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad we're doing this together. It might feel a little awkward or strange at first, I'm feeling that too, but we're gonna get through it together and we're gonna crush it. For today's lesson, you will need a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, and you'll also need a turn and talk partner. Now you might be saying, Ms. Green, I don't have my normal turn and talk partner that I usually sit with on the carpet, and that's okay. A turn and talk partner can be anyone. Your turn and talk partner could be a family member like your mom or your grandpa or your little brother. Your turn and talk partner could be your cat or your goldfish. Um, or if you are like me, your turn and talk partner could be uh, someone you really look up to and really admire. Like, I like to have my book conversations with Russell Wilson. He's an excellent partner. He loves reading. Uh, and he has a lot of free time in his hands right now, too. So if you want to borrow my partner, you can and have your conversations in your head with Russell Wilson. The most important thing is that you are thinking deeply about what we're reading and that you are sharing it with someone uh, and whoever you choose to talk to is just fine. I know that most of you have been exploring expository nonfiction this year in your Making Meaning lessons. Uh, you've been looking for and using text features to better understand what you're reading. You have been um, looking into how expository nonfiction is organized. And you might also remember that one of the strategies that good readers use is they ask questions when they're reading expository nonfiction. The expository nonfiction book you'll hear over the next few lessons is about coral reefs, brightly colored communities of living things found in many of our oceans all over the planet. Today, I'll be reading Coral Reefs by an author I know you're already familiar with, Seymour Simon. I'm going to read different parts of the book to you over the next three days. Today, I'm going to read the introduction, the part of the book that introduces you to coral reefs. Before I get started, I want you to think, what do you know about coral reefs? Turn and talk to your partner. Tell Russell Wilson or your goldfish all about what you think you know about coral reefs. One thing I know about coral reefs, or I think I know about coral reefs, is that they're found in the ocean. I think I know that they are really colorful, and I think I know that fish really like coral reefs. Now, based on what you think you know, what do you wonder about coral reefs? Turn to your partner. I wonder where coral reefs are found, so I'm gonna add that to my chart. also wonder, can we do that again? Can I start that part again? Sorry, I totally forgot what my other wonder was. So how do I redo something? I also wonder what coral reefs are made out of. So 
So I'm going to start with the part of our book, the introduction that introduces us to uh, coral reefs and tells us a little bit about what they are. I want you to keep these wonders, your own wonders, and you can think about mine too. Keep them in your mind as you listen to me read the first part of the book. Coral Reefs by Seymour Simon. Imagine diving beneath the waves into the warm waters of a tropical ocean. You're surrounded by strange rock shapes with brilliant colors, reds, greens, blues, oranges, and pinks. The colors change and shimmer, and the waters are full of equally vibrant fish. There are other strange-looking living things moving along the colorful rocks. This underwater world is like nothing you have ever seen on land. You are exploring a coral reef. Coral reefs look like a bunch of rock formations, but a coral reef is actually a gigantic community of living things. For a long time, corals were a mystery to people. They were called rock plants or plant animals. Now we know that each coral polyp, basically a mouth, is a soft sea animal that is something like a jellyfish. The polyp makes a hard protective limestone skeleton. Coral forms when a free-floating polyp attaches to a rock on a shallow seafloor of a tropical ocean. The polyp buds and divides again and again, developing into a large colony of thousands of mouths connected to one another. A colony is a group of individual things with a common characteristic living close together. The polyp buds and divides again and again, developing into large colony of thousands of mouths connected to one another. As nearby colonies attach to each other, the framework of a coral reef forms. Coral reefs grow very slowly. In a hundred years, a coral colony may grow just a few feet. Coral reefs that have began growing millions of years ago now stretch for hundreds of miles. What have you learned so far about coral reefs? What I wonder statements have been explained in the reading so far? What else do you wonder? So I was wondering what coral reefs are made of, and the text said that they are gigantic communities of living things. I learned that coral is formed when a polyp attaches to a rock on the seafloor and then multiplies. I also have some new wonders. I'm getting really curious. I wonder what coral eats, and I wonder what different types of coral they are. So I'm going to add those wonders to my chart. So let's continue reading to see if any of my questions get answered, if any of your wonders are answered, if any of your partner's wonders are answered, if any of Russell Wilson's wonders are answered. The two main kinds of coral are hard and soft. Reef building corals are called hard corals because their skeletons are made of limestone. They usually have six tentacles, which, re which help them catch food, tiny sea creatures called plankton. A tentacle is a long, thin, arm-like part of an animal used for grasping or feeling. They usually have six tentacles, which help them catch food, tiny sea creatures called plankton. 
Algae, tiny green plants that shelter inside the polyps, use sunlight to make food for the coral. Hard corals are typically found in shallow waters less than 100 feet deep. They are named for the way they look. Some common hard corals include table, elk horn, branching, and brain coral, encrusting corals that look like mosses, and massive coral that looks like a rock boulder. Table coral looks like a flat tabletop. Branching coral has the appearance of a spiky tree with smaller branches reaching out, and brain coral looks like the ridges of a brain. Soft corals have different colors and shapes, such as fans, flowering plants, and folded pieces of leather. They usually have eight tentacles and feed only on plankton. They do not have stony skeletons and are not reef-building corals. They grow in both tropical seas and colder, deeper ocean waters, often bending and swaying in the ocean currents. You might typically find these corals in an aquarium. Sea fans look like feathery fans growing on the sea bottom. Sea whips branch into whip-like stalks, and finger leather coral look like folded pieces of leather. Most of the world's coral reefs are found in the warm waters of the Pacific Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, the Red Sea, the Arabian Gulf, and the Indian Ocean. Coral reefs cover only a tiny fraction of the ocean floor, but they contain more than a quarter of all the underwater ocean life. They are home to more than 4,000 kinds of fish, 800 different kinds of hard coral, and many more thousands of other kinds of animals and plants. Scientists think that more than one million different species of animals and plants live in and around coral reefs. What have you learned so far about coral reefs? What I wonder statements have been explained in the reading so far? Turn to your partner. What else do you wonder? Turn to your partner. One of my I wonders was about the different types of coral. And in the part that I read, I found out that there are two types of coral. There's hard coral and there's soft coral. And they're named after how they look. Um, so I thought the brain coral was really cool because it really did look like a brain. I also heard something that told me where they're found. In the book, it said that most coral reefs are found in the warm waters of the Pacific Ocean, of the Caribbean Sea, of the Red Sea, and the Arabian Gulf and the Indian Ocean. I'm still wondering though, I wonder what types of fish live in coral reefs. In the pictures, I saw some really beautiful ones, so I wanna know all about the fish that live in coral reefs. I'm gonna add that to my poster. I'm also wondering with all those fish living in there, how do they stay safe? where I'm going to stop today. Learning to wonder and question while you're reading is going to help you think carefully about what you are reading and to look for answers to your questions while you read. 
Tomorrow we're gonna read more about coral reefs and we will listen for information about our wonders. Today for IDR, I want you to pick an expository nonfiction text if you can. Expository text gives true information about real things. I have been, I wonder if this is true about you too, I have been reading, I was reading with my class a lot of books about nature. And so I had been really interested in, in different parts of nature and I found this book called The Top of the World, Climbing Mount Everest. And I was really excited to read this. I like to hike, but I can't imagine climbing Mount Everest. So I chose to read this book. I'm really uh, curious about it, and I have a lot of wonders about this book. I'm gonna spend my time, I'm gonna start, before I start reading, I'm gonna think about what I wanna know about Mount Everest and what I'm wondering. I'm wondering who the first people to climb Mount Everest and to get to the top were. I'm also wondering how long it takes to get to the top and what kind of dangers are waiting for people that climb. And that's what I'm gonna be reading today as I'm reading. I'm gonna be looking for the answers to my questions and also looking for opportunities to get curious about other things. Before you start your reading today, I'd like you to do the same thing. I'd like you to think about your topic and what you wonder about your topic and then as you read, look for answers to your questions. Now you might have a book uh, that you took home from school or that you just have in your house that's expository nonfiction, and that's great if you wanna read that. But you could also find some expository nonfiction on our online student resources. You could go to Pebble Go. You could go to um, Thank you. You go to Pebble Go, you could go to Reads Kids, and you or Kids Reads, and you could go to Tumble Books Library. Do that part over. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. So, okay. You could find expository nonfiction on Pebble Go. You could find it at Kids Reads, and you could go to Tumble Book Library to find expository nonfiction that you might be curious about. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Happy reading.